Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we will take a look at an introduction to the animation system in Unreal Engine. With this series, you will go from zero to hero in animation. First of all, we need to see an overview of the asset types that we have in Unreal. We have skeletal meshes, which are the base for everything animation or almost everything. They can be used in tandem with animation sequences, animation composites, which are similar to animation sequences, control rigs to rig our characters, sockets for holding things, and then the animation blueprint, which is going to be the key of everything. In fact, I want you to see that from the animation blueprint, we can do tons of stuff, like for example, rigid body simulations, anim dynamic simulations, IK, blend spaces, layered blends, anim montage, you see that this can be really overwhelming, but do not worry. We are going to go step by step and explaining everything clearly, so you will have no problems. And when you are done with this series, you are going to be awesome at animation with Unreal Engine. Okay, so the first thing that we need to be clear on is this high level overview of the animation system in Unreal Engine. So the first thing is that the character blueprint is going to have a skeletal mesh. That skeletal mesh is going to have an animation blueprint which reproduces the contents of the anim graph. Then that anim graph is going to read data that the event graph uh, retrieves from other blueprints, the character blueprint for example, or wherever, and then the anim graph interprets that data and outputs a final pose for our skeletal mesh. Okay, so now we are going to take a look at every single basic asset that the Unreal Animation System needs in depth. So the first thing that we need to take a look at are these two boxes. First, the skeleton and the associated character model. So the skeleton has the bone information and the animation rig of the character and then this skeleton can be shared between different characters that have the same rig and it is combined with a, a character model. So every character model is going to have a single skeleton. The combination of those two things is called an skeletal mesh. So it is an special asset type that contains the character's visual mesh, the geometry of the character, and the character's skeleton, so the character rig, with the bone data, which will then be used in animation, and we will animate the bones, and the visual mesh will follow, because we have some weights associated to those bones. As you know, that is called the character's bind the skin. Okay, so to import a skeletal mesh in Unreal Engine, you can use the import button or you can drag and drop from the Windows Explorer. I will be using the second method and dragging and dropping to the content browser. Then a menu will pop up with the skeletal mesh import options. You can see that skeletal mesh is ticked. Make sure that it really is because if not, it won't import correctly. Next, you have the import mesh option and the import content type, which is geometry and skinning weights, because we want to import the geometry and the bind skin of our character. Next, the skeleton is set to none. With that, a new one will be created. If you already had imported a character with the same skeleton, you could just select that skeleton. Next, we have more advanced options, like use T0 as ref pose, which will avoid bind pose errors. So you can try to set it and it will fix some of them. And next we have the animation options. If the skeletal mesh comes with animations, we can set them there. The transform controls, I recommend not using these ones because if you use sockets and you change things here, things will not look right in the sockets. Make sure that the character has the correct 
dimensions and proportions before importing in Unreal. Next, we have the materials, like in the static mesh, we can look for them inside the FBX and create new materials or not. And that's pretty much all. If you click Import All, you will see that Unreal Engine starts loading everything into memory and into the content browser. And when it is done, the materials and the skeletal mesh will appear. So here we have everything imported correctly. And now let's take a look at each type of asset. Let's start with the skeletal mesh. You can see that everything is looking good. Our character's geometry has imported correctly and its pose. You can see the skeleton on the left. You can see all of the bones and everything related to the skeleton. There is also a button on the left with a skeleton that you can use to check things related to the skeleton. But let's go back to the skeletal mesh. In asset details, we have the materials and also the LODs and other skeletal mesh options. In the skeleton section, we also have the animation curves and other things related to our skeleton. So just bear that in mind. Next, we have the physics asset editor, which in this case, when you create the skeletal mesh, tries to create a physics asset automatically with not much uh, success. And in this case, you can see that you would need to create it manually. I also have a tutorial for that, so go check it out. Next, we have the animation asset browser. Here, we have the animation editor, and you can see animations, blend the spaces, anim montage, whatever animation assets you have associated to the skeletal meshes skeleton. So in this case, as you can see, there is only the T-pose asset, so an animation sequence with a T-pose and nothing else. Okay, so once we are done with this, we can go ahead and drag and drop the skeletal mesh onto the level, but it is not going to do anything because we do not have animations and we do not have an animation blueprint. Okay, so you can see that an animation asset was created when we imported it, the physics asset, and also the skeleton asset. Apart from that, we also have the materials, which were also automatically created. If you want to get up and running fast with a skeletal mesh and a third-person character, I recommend you look for the third-person blueprints folder, and there you will find the character blueprint, the default character blueprint. You can go ahead and double-click it. It will open up and here you have a basic character setup for you with a capsule, character movement, etc. And then you can just go to the skeletal mesh component and then switch it for whatever you want and you can reuse a lot of stuff. Okay, so next, if we had skeletal meshes but no animations, they would do no good. So the next basic asset type are the animation sequences. Like skeletal meshes, they are imported using FBX files, dragging and dropping to the content browser, and they are also linked with a single skeleton. But in this case, sometimes you can retarget the animations to other skeletons. You need them to be kind of similar. For example, bipeds, with different complexity or some bone differences. But if you have bigger differences, like uh, an animal that walks on four legs instead of being a biped, with those cases, you are not going to get good results when using retargeting. So bear that in mind. Okay, so now that we know that we need animations, that's where animation sequences come in. They are a type of asset that contains animation data that will be played in the skeletal mesh. They contain keyframes that specify the position of bones and the rotation and scale during a certain animation. By the way, we need to blend between keyframes because usually the gameplay will not be exactly 30 FPS. We can have 60, 40, 20 FPS, so there are a lot of problems if we just play back the keyframes as is. 
Okay, so how do we import an animation sequence in Unreal Engine? So we again just need to drag and drop the FBX onto the content browser. A similar menu will appear as before because it has an skeleton associated and a visual mesh. If it didn't have a visual mesh, you would see a simplified menu for importing. The important options here are going to be the animation options because we are trying to import an animation. So we need to pay special attention to these details. Next, we have also the transform. Remember, do not use it if you can. And then you can click on import all when you are ready and everything is done. And when Unreal is finished loading, you are going to see again a similar set of asset types. If you would only import the animation and not the visual mesh, you would see a lot less. And in the content browser, you would only see an animation sequence. Here we are. We have the animation imported. Here you have the animation editor, like we saw before. But here we can see that we already have a correct animation, which we can play and pause, step forward and backward, and go to the end or the beginning. We can also record animations, like for example, if we would make a change in the additive layer tracks, for example, and change the position or transformation of a bone, we could save it to another animation sequence and then reuse it later without having the additive layer track. So that comes in really handy. Next on the left, we have the details, the acid details, with the options that we can change in our animation sequences. For now, we are not going to dive deep into this. We will see what each one does when it is needed. But for now, know that everything is there, like, for example, the enable root motion option. But right now, those are kind of advanced and the video is already running long. And these default settings usually work well, except in the advanced cases like the root motion one. OK, so using the animation in our level is quite simple. You just need to drag and drop it and you are already done. But as I mentioned before, without an animation blueprint, you are not going to be able to do much in terms of gameplay. So here you can see that everything is working fine. And let me just rotate Citrine so you can see the animation better. But as you can see, it is working OK. So no problems here. As you can see, it is looking great. Maybe it could run a little better, but right now I am simulating and changing things. Everything is looking great now and the animation is looking A-OK. -okay. Well, so that's it for this video. As you can see, the animation system in Unreal Engine is quite complex. But in this series, we will go one by one to make everything clear and make it easy for you. Remember, if this video has been helpful to you, go ahead, like and subscribe, and we'll see each other in the next videos. Huge shout out and thanks to all my Patreons. As you know, making these videos takes a ton of time and effort because I research in depth all of the topics that I cover. So if you want me to keep making awesome stuff, consider supporting me on Patreon.